Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. We begin with some big news. COVID-19 vaccines for kids under the age of five could soon be available. And that tops our news here at noon. Thank you for joining us. I'm Evrod Kasimi. Pfizer says that it will seek emergency use authorization for a three dose course of its COVID-19 vaccine in pediatric patients ages six months to five years old. The company says results from their latest study showed the vaccine, which is one tenth of the dose that's given to adults, was well tolerated among the more than 1600 children in the trial. Pfizer says the efficacy rate for the vaccine is over 80%. Pfizer and BioNTech plan to submit these findings to its rolling emergency use authorization application sometime this week. Also making headlines this afternoon, the parents of Oxford shooting victim Justin Schilling are added to a lawsuit joining the families of multiple other victims. Their attorney has also filed an additional lawsuit in federal court. And that new lawsuit is against Oxford Community Schools and Oxford High School teachers, counselors, and administrators. Local 4's Sean Lay joins us now live this afternoon. And Sean, that attorney just spoke. What did he have to say about all this? He has said a lot, and so did the family of Justin Schilling as well. Very, very emotional. Let me break it all down for you. As you mentioned, Everard, good afternoon to you. The Schilling family now has stepped forward. They're joining the class action lawsuit with those other Oxford families in civil court, state court. But new and new overnight is this federal lawsuit. Attorney Ben Johnson saying federal claims now he is going after. The Schilling family also joining that federal lawsuit on behalf of their son, Justin Schilling, killed in the Oxford shooting. Now, this federal lawsuit going after Oxford School's suicide prevention program. Johnson explains that's a process that the school has put in place to assess someone for intervention to prevent suicide. Attorney Johnson says the school had the duty to determine if the school shooter was a threat to himself or a threat to others when they encountered him. He says they failed to do so. Now, as I mentioned, we heard from Justin Schilling's mother today on how this awful tragedy has absolutely, of course, devastated her. We're beyond heartbroken. We're traumatized and we're devastated and we are not okay. It's been 174 days since he was murdered, and it feels like it was just last week. For me, there will never be healing. There will only be coping. I will never be the same. Never be the same. That's Justin Schilling's mother. Attorney Ben Johnson says he's representing these families because he says the families want answers into what went wrong. He says that's what he's fighting for on behalf of the families. Much more coming up at 5 o'clock. Ever up back to you. Oh, our hearts, of course, going out to that mother and all of the victims of such a tragedy. Sean, thank you. Let's turn our attention now to the aftermath. Of the deadly tornado in Gaylord, the Michigan Attorney General is now sending investigators to the city to investigate reported instances of price gouging. In the meantime, as you can see here, these images are powerful. After that, EF3 tornado wreaked havoc in less than 30 minutes. This was just Friday afternoon. Local force Nick Monticelli joins us now live in the city. And uh, Nick, you, these images are, are forever ingrained in your mind. They will be. And you mentioned how it was on the ground for 30 minutes, but devastation like this only took about 30 seconds. You talk to these homeowners who were literally running for their lives, hiding wherever they could, and this is just one area of the Nottingham Forest Mobile Estates Park. Now take a look at this video. This gives you an even better perspective. Live drone four is in the air right now, and this again, those debris fields, those are people's homes. And then in this trailer park, there are 72 lots. The fire chief telling us that 95% of this area destroyed. That means that close to 70 homes are now gone. And we met up with a couple of residents who were here early this morning searching for anything and everything they could find. I wasn't thinking I might not make it. I'm thinking I can't hold on to my wife and my son tight enough. To, I wasn't thinking about myself. Uh, you know, you just pick up the pieces and move on. That's all you can do. Try and put it behind you. Be grateful you're alive. Yeah, grateful is probably the only word that some of these folks can use right now because the other word that they want to use is angry, frustrated, and confused. They don't know what to do next. Is insurance going to cover them? Do they have insurance? How do they get any of this cleaned up? They've got to move a lot 
of debris and their homes out of the way, lawnmowers, washing machines, all this is going to take big, heavy construction equipment to move out of the way. So we're, we're talking about weeks, if not months, of cleanup yet to come here. So this is just the beginning phase of all of this. And just to make things worse, this is just one area, right? You've got businesses and homes on the other side of Main Street also hit as well. So Everett and Brandon, it's very hard to imagine just how much damage happened and how many lives are destroyed because of this. Oh, man, it really puts it all into perspective. The, the mountain yes. of personal belongings that we see right there behind you. Somebody used yeah. to sit and watch TV right there on that couch and now their whole life right. is, is yeah. just in one big pile. <sighs> Nick, thank you. Uh, of course, we've been keeping our eyes on the forecast uh, all this time and, right. and watching what has happened, and then here we are today. Yeah, and, you know, 10 years and two months after the big EF3 that hit Dexter right. hits uh, another one, big one up north, and we think, you know, top five or six strongest tornadoes ever to hit northern lower Michigan. There have only been four or five of these EF3 or stronger storms, and this was Friday afternoon, and Mother Nature does not discriminate. This thing came across I-75, right into the downtown area of Gaylord and then into residential areas, just walloping everything in its path with 150 mile an hour winds swirling around. It was 3.30 to about 3.55, 17 miles on the ground from that storm. So Nick is checking out all of that damage and, and every negative thing that comes with it, unfortunately. Back here, we're middle 50s to near 60. Unfortunately, Everod going to be tough to shake the clouds, so only low and middle 60s, but a dry Monday. Brandon, thank you so much. We'll be checking in with him in just a little bit. Texas authorities are on the hunt for a Michigan native who's accused of shooting and killing an elite cyclist. The U.S. Marshals say that they're looking for Caitlin Marie Armstrong in connection to the killing of Anna Mariah Wilson. Authorities say that Armstrong killed Wilson on May 11th after finding out that the athlete had been romantically involved with her partner, Colin Strickland. An arrest affidavit revealed that Armstrong had been in a relationship with Strickland, but during a break, Strickland began seeing Wilson. Sources say that Armstrong became furious. Detroit Police Chief James White plans to hold a news conference later this afternoon. He's expected to discuss the search for two men who allegedly fired shots at Detroit police officers. This happened around 4 Saturday morning right near Davison Street and Dexter Avenue. Police said the men were driving a black Ford Fusion. Fortunately, nobody was hurt, but that squad car was hit. President Biden said today that the United States would intervene militarily if China attempts to take Taiwan by force. You didn't want to get involved in the Ukraine conflict militarily for obvious reasons. Are you willing to get involved militarily to defend Taiwan if it comes to that? Yes. You are? That's a commitment we made. We agree with a one China policy. We signed on to it and all the attendant agreements made from there. But the idea that that it could be taken by force just taken by force is just not is just not appropriate. It will dislocate the entire region. The White House has walked back on Biden's statement, saying that there is no change in the U.S. policy toward China. And big developments now in the country's ongoing baby formula shortage. The first shipment from Europe arrived in the U.S. and more is expected in the coming days. About 78,000 pounds of formula was flown in from Germany and unloaded in Indiana on Sunday. Last week, President Biden authorized a program to import formula from abroad. The White House says a second flight of formula from Germany will make its way to Washington, D.C. on Wednesday, but Sunday shipment will not hit store shelves. It's going to go on trucks uh, and it's going to be delivered in hospitals and uh, home health care clinics all across uh, the country, providing support and help. Uh, I'm told that uh, this shipment provides enough formula uh, to take care of 9,000 babies and 18,000 toddlers uh, for a week. The White House is also allowing Abbott Nutrition and another company to get priority shipment of formula ingredients. Abbott's Michigan plant, you might remember, was shut down because of a recall, but the FDA hopes to have it up and running in just the next few days. Meanwhile, we continue to get the word out about a recall of Jif peanut butter. The FDA is investigating a salmonella outbreak that's linked to the peanut butter. 
14 people have gotten sick in 12 different states because peanut butter can have a two year shelf life. People are asked to check their pantries. We've got a complete list, a complete rundown of how to check if your peanut butter is included in this recall list on the homepage of our website. Just go to click on Detroit.com for that. Heads up, if you shop at Meyer this weekend, you're going to want to check your bank statements. The chain says that all Meyer stores had problems with debit and credit card payments. Some customers were charged more than once for their purchases. Meanwhile, Meyer is saying that they are working with banks to remove those charges. But if the charges are still in your account or your statement, you need to reach out to your bank personally to get that fixed. And if you need to fill up for the work week and the school week, gas prices are still going up. Here in Michigan, AAA says that we're paying an average of 4.57 per gallon. In Metro Detroit, we're paying 14 cents more than that uh, per gallon. The average is 4.59 per gallon today. Just last week, we were paying 4.45. And the city of Detroit has figured out a way to, to try and save on gas. It's going electric with its buses. DDOT unveiled four electric buses this morning, the first of its in the fleet, and the buses from manufacturer Proterra will be put into rotation today. DDOT says the buses produce fewer emissions and they're more energy efficient and they're even quieter. DDOT also says that it's committed to adding more green technology.